are. And our thoughts about who we are come from a place. So as he thinks in his heart, so he is. So if I link this to verse 6, which is the context, it says, do not eat the bread of a miser or desire his delicacies because he's giving you and he's not giving you. Um, it, certainly the greater bulk of us listening to me are Gambians and proudly so too. You remember when we were all little children and you know you go to school your mother gives you money and you buy tangal or you buy gato or you buy kebab dafa or you buy something or you have bread and somebody says give me some meima there is a way you hold the bread <laughs> with one hand or two hands and you leave a little point for this person to cut off and by the time they put their two fingers or their hands they can really not take much that is how a miser is he is giving you but he is not giving you he's saying i'm jealous but the heart has not given you and so it says that do not eat the bread of a miser or desire his delicacies because he's thinking that why should i give you this is mine this food is mine so if he gives you don't take because as he thinks in his heart that is how he is. And I'm sure if I extrapolate this thought, it's not just as he thinks in his heart about himself, but as he thinks in his heart about you. And how you have come to shorten his ration, and how you must go and eat in your house, and how you know you have and you're behaving like you don't have. It's just how he thinks in his heart. And that's why, ladies and gentlemen, it's sad when any of us becomes a victim of how other people think whether they think in a racially prejudiced way, whether they think in a supremacist way, a sexist way, a tribalistic way, it is how they think and how they think is what they are. Now, let me give a little twist that should help us. And this, I hope, would help all of us who are in um, some form of a religious world, particularly those of us who go to church. Because most times, Whenever people make a statement, quite frankly, anything, whether it's a statement by a king, a queen, the president, an army commander, a pastor, a head teacher, most times we feel that that statement will make us better. So in my field, uh, religiously, sometimes we are good at telling people that we can see them becoming this, we can see them climbing higher. This scripture does not say, for as the pastor thinks about him, so he is. This scripture does not say, so as the doctor thinks about you, so you are. It says, as you yourself think about yourself, so you are. And so you can see that even without an external stimulus trying to bring a transition into my life, I need to change, transform rethink, change my thinking because who I am, my behavior, my outlook, my perspective, my mindset, my paradigm, my worldview, everything about my life is a function of how I have thought about myself. Ladies and gentlemen, if you think you are bad, <laughs> you will behave like that. And it's going to take a lot of hard work for people to tell you you are good and you choose to be good. Every change demands a personal participation. Even with children. Admitted with children, you know, there could be the voice of an adult, the shouting sometimes, the punishing, the depriving, the grounding, the caning, you know, the shaming sometimes. But with an adult, it's difficult. But it's still requires a participation. If a child came home and threw his or her socks on the floor, the parent can shout, before I open my eyes, <laughs> you know, and the socks will disappear. You can't say that to an adult. You can't say that to your husband. You can't say that to your wife. You can say that to your colleague in the office. Before I close my eyes, let that newspaper with all LA be off the table. Because the person may back back, answer you back, and just because of that all LA, you may have a week of 
problems in the office because there will be all kinds of other things related to that OLA paper that would affect office productivity and all that. So as he thinks in his heart, so is he. So here you are, you are trying to bring a desired goal, an improvement to this person's life. But you have not been able to come into how they think. You have a problem. Here you are, let's say you are embarking upon a project and you feel that, well, look, there have been too many light thefts around our area. So let's do a neighborhood watch or something like that as happens in, in some other West African countries. And you call a, a meeting of the residents of the community. You can have a beautiful meeting or you can have a meeting where people start venting their anger with all kinds of other things. And then you know that you are not on the same wavelength because you are saying that, look, let's solve this problem for us. Let's have an entrance to this community and everybody agrees that anybody who comes after 11 p.m. cannot pass in, like happens in some countries. No matter what, everybody knows that's the rule. And if you're going to have an exception, like somebody flying into the country with a one o'clock flight, you take permission and all that. But somebody will now say that, hey, but this is what, this is not, that. then you know that you can have meetings upon meetings upon meetings where you serve soft drinks and snacks, but you will get nowhere because somebody's thought has affected behavior. You may be angry with the speech. You may go home and say, all oh, these people, they are, you know, they are antisocial. They are anti-progress. They are not patriotic. They are this, you know, you know, we can say that, but you have to check that their behavior is a function of how they are thinking. And their thinking comes from somewhere. Maybe one of them is somebody who had lent somebody money who never paid. So for him, his money goes nowhere. Recently, I had a discussion with some two um, mothers, young mothers, and I'm just having a counseling session with them, single parents. And I said to them, as we are chatting now, if somebody just came, knocked on this office door, and greeted me and greeted you and said, oh, I want to give each of you $5,000 C. I said to them, as young mothers with children that are about four or five or three, I will be surprised that you leave this office and you go out and the first thing you do is you hire a cab, a taxi cab, and then you go to one of these restaurants or you go to a hotel and just relax and blow, as we say in Africa, you blow the money. I said to them, that kind of behavior might be expected, even though wrongly so, might be expected from somebody 17, 18, 19, who is impressionable, who feels the world is watching her, she's on Ebony magazine, or she's on Q and O, and whatever the magazines are called. So as for her, that money, let her just blow it. I asked these two young mothers, I said, what would you do with the money? One of them said, Pastor, I'll go and pay school fees. Because as you think, so you are. And your thinking comes from somewhere. Because, ladies and gentlemen, if you have gone through hard times before and you have lost, maybe in bankruptcy, you have suffered or something, chances are nobody teaches you about saving. You get ready. I would want to stop here because there's a whole lot that I want to say, but let me just put it this way. We all have a desired goal. You want to be rich. You want to be like the Wimbledon tennis champion. You want to be Serena Williams. You want to be this. You want to be um, Tiger Woods. You want to be Usain Bolt. But your behavior, the regularity of your patterns, of your life, your nutrition, your habits, your friends, have to change. And before that, how you think has to change. And all the things that have led to you thinking in that way have to one by one be stripped up, put together properly. So once you change it, it works out well. I'll stop here in this initial 
segment 